Hey, I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're watching the Ask Gary V Show. Tim, that's a great question. Oh, that's a great question. Matt, this is a great question. On this episode, I talk about fantasy baseball, Instagram makeup artists, and what do people really want out of social media. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. This is Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is episode 77 of the Ask Gary V Show. What's up, everyone? This has been a clunky 2015. I've been traveling my ass off, so I don't feel like we're in a rhythm, and it's not gonna continue. March is a disaster for the Ask Gary V Show. I'm just setting the tone right now for everybody. I apologize. Uh, but I want to give a huge shout out to all the fans that are watching, 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 and listening watching live on Meerkat. That's an actual animal for all of you that don't know. Um, you know, I appreciate all of you. I know that when shows are not consistent, one of the great things I learned in 2006, 7, 8 was Wine Library was winning because it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it was every day, five days a week for years because I was always at the store, never vacationing, and that helped it. This show doesn't have that luxury, though we have modern technology getting pinged when things are on and things of that nature. Uh, and so I really appreciate all of you into that. I appreciate the people that are subscribed to the podcast, are subscribed to my YouTube page, are part of my email service. Do follow me on social. I take none of these things for granted and I want to start episode 77 with an enormous, just outrageous, completely authentic and serious thank you. Hey Gary Vee, this is Carl, this is Mike and on a recent podcast of Carl and Mike, we answered five of your questions of the day in five minutes. So we want you to answer one of ours. Just one, Gary V. That's it. Carl and Mike ask, Gary, what do most people want to get out of social media? Carl, Mike, first and foremost, I just instructed India. Let's show India, you know, because India just told me an awesome story that like people are starting to recognize <laughs> her from the show. You're India from the Ask Gary V show? I love that. Uh, Carl, like, listen, it, it's very simple. What people want out of social media completely maps to what they want out of life. There is, you know, social media, internet life, internet culture. I was saying something the other day that meme culture has taken over culture. I was talking to the Vayner Media team, uh, you know, because the internet is life. And so, what people want out of social media are the things they want in real life. They want the fame and notoriety, India. They want, you know, they want, they want, they want this. You know what they want out of social media? They want this, my friend, right? Because they want this in real life. They want they want a place to express their art and show the world their art. India, you know? And so like, these are the things that people want. Exactly what you want in life. What did I want out of social media? I wanted to interact with more people. I wanted the vanity of being like, are you Gary Vee? Sure am, you wanna take a selfie? Psh. Like, I wanted to fulfill the things that were in my heart, getting out there, leaving a legacy, not realizing how much I love to teach, but that's what Wine Library TV and the Ask Gary Vee show are. Who knew, F student. A teacher. And so like the things that are really interesting to me are that people want what they actually want. And uh, what social media allows them to do, my friend, is use the backbone of the internet to cut out the middle of the gatekeepers that used to keep us away from that. Who the f would have hired me as a college professor teaching marketing? No one. Guess what? That is what's interesting about the world we're living in now. Direct to consumer, my friends. You wanna watch me on the show? You wanna follow me? How many people on Meerkat right now in the middle of the day? There's 318 people that are busy in the middle of the day. Get back to work that are deciding that this is valuable to their time. A bunch of people are about to reply, this is work. And you're right, this is good content. I appreciate it. And so, that's what it allows to do. It allows to actually map exactly what you actually want in life because you have no restrictions to actually achieve it. Sandy asks, Gary, how do you maintain a good, pleasant mood with family after a long day of hustle? Sandy, great question. India, was it you replied an email who was like, yeah, I want to know that answer too? Look, here's the thing. Uh, 
Uh, I, you know, this is only one person. I've always had, and my dad did not do this well, and maybe that's why it affected me. I am so grateful and so thankful to the family members that allow me, my wife specifically, allow me the freedom to hustle the way I do. I feel like it's totally inappropriate to disrespect that love to then carry over my headaches home. In general, and this is something that, um, the people that know me best, the, the nicest thing they can say to me, and it happened, you know, been said to me 12 times in my life, nothing. Um, but my best friend Brandon, who runs Wine Library, my mom, uh, my sister, my wife, AJ, my dad hasn't, been, but you know. Anyway, there's been a couple people that have, uh, have said to me how much they admire that I never take my headaches out on them. I think there's really, at the end of the day, two people. People that need somebody else to dump their headaches on and people that collect those headaches. I admire my mom tremendously. She collects everybody's headaches. Uh, I'm very thankful that I took that DNA. I'm thrilled to hear your headaches, but I have no interest in giving you mine. And so that foundation, that DNA trait, allows me to walk right in home with all the insanity, lost this client, cash flow's not as good, problem, can't ship to this state anymore, didn't get that deal, this deal fell through, didn't get that opportunity, number two in the New York Times. You know, something way worse than that, like somebody's leaving that I don't want, somebody's sick that I don't want to be sick. All these things that are life and are intense, the second I walk in that door, I need to repay that amazing family that has given me the opportunity to do my thing. I need to shut that all off and turn on a different gear. And the truth is, it's just easy for me. No different than when Kobe, Stefan loves Kobe, show Stefan. You know, when Kobe goes on the court, he becomes a different character. That's how I'm very much like that. On stage, different dude. Right now, different dude. Running this company, different dude. Walk in the house, different dude. And so I just have a lot of gears. I gear it up. It's Naya Preston from Naya Preston Makeup on Instagram and I'm a 10 year old makeup artist and I just have one simple question. I post looks on Instagram and people ask me to like their pictures in exchange they like my pictures. And I was just wondering how you would handle that. Naya, first of all, adore the hustle, crushed that I wasn't lucky like you and wasn't born during the internet era. Do you know how much fun these two would have mixing up videos of me talking trash as a 12 year old baseball card dealer? We could have had an amazing narrative. I'm pissed. And watching you talk about your, your, your background in this short little video, including the fact that you said I'm a makeup artist on Instagram, right? That has been for a lot of people, that, that's a little moment in there that I want everybody to wrap their head around. Not on YouTube, on Instagram. The mediums continue to change. The experts in those mediums that move first and best will always win, a la what I wrote in Crush It, oh, I don't know, six years ago, coming true. Naya is, soon Crush It's gonna be older than the people asking questions on this show. Naya is a real life version of that dream come true for me, so I appreciate you for that, Naya. Uh, Oh, I like what you're doing there, Stefan. Stefan, by the way, is trying to take a picture of the screen, taking, I mean, it's so goddamn meta over here. If, you, if it's in, say, podcasters, I know a lot of you love listening, but this is an episode to watch just to see what meta Stefan is up to. Um, Naya, the answer is, I'm not a big fan of that. It doesn't feel authentic. You like my post, I like your post. There's something about the karma and the energy of that kind of tactic that I think doesn't really work. And so, what I would recommend you to do is be a good Samaritan and a good community of Instagram fashion world user. Meaning, I would spend an hour of the day going through all the people who are actually putting out content that you actually do like and heart that up and take the 10 to 20% of people that then find you because of that and then the 10% of that 10%, 1%, that authentically want to give you love back and there's something bound in that authenticity that is so much greater than the scale of the growth hacking or the black hat growth hacking that that is that I don't think brings you as much value as you may think. So darling, if you're willing to listen to me, I think you go about it the highbrow way. But the way to get results and the way I got results on Twitter was you actually got to go out and give some love. You have to take an hour of your time and give some love. And so the first thing I would do is watch this video, then go directly to your parents and find out if you can go to sleep an hour later each night so that you can actually execute this. Amber asks, Gary, how do you motivate teams of remote workers without a payment incentive? So far, positivity and hustle are not producing results. I think communication is key, but I'm not sure how to improve it. Amber, you're 
you're exactly right and there's several things here that are a problem and that we need to address. Amber, number one, communication is always key. You don't know how to address it because you don't want to address it, my darling, because it's very easy to address communication. You create the scenario for communication. What I would do is I would email or text or hit up on Gchat or however, Stack or whatever the way you guys roll, hit them up and say, I want to talk to you, DRock. I want to talk to you, Stepan. I want to talk to you, India. I want to talk to you, Davis. Like that is basically what you do in that scenario. You create the communication and then you ask them, hey, India, hey, India. You're not executing to the level that I'm hoping, but I'm gonna blame that on me. What can I de- do for you to make you execute better? That works. And so, <laughs> that's what you need to do. One-on-one scalable. If you have one employee, two employees, you know what scares me? And you can leave this in the comments. What scares me is, how many employees are we talking about? Because I'm trying to do it for 500. And I have a funny feeling you're not talking about 500. So, this is on you. Hey Gary, Matthew Berry here from ESPN and you and I are friends in real life. So I happen to know in addition to all the other things that you're into, you happen to love fantasy sports, especially your fantasy baseball. And you know that in addition to my duties at ESPN, I happen to also own two websites, rotopass.com and rotopassbaseball.com. Both these sites cater to fantasy sports enthusiasts and frankly, I want to know what I can do to take it to the next level. I'm lucky in that I have a nice platform here at ESPN and on my Twitter and Facebook social media platforms to be able to promote the site, but ultimately, it's just me. And I want to expand the site beyond just my reach. What can I do to make the site go viral? What can I do to increase sales, to increase visibility of the site? I don't want to take on money or try to raise anything like that. Again, it's just me. So what can I do to take those sites to the next level? Matthew, first of all, big shout out, love your work. We are friends in real life and digital life. Two minutes. Uh, First of all, I hate fantasy football and have never played it and never will because my love for the Jets is too intense and I don't want to hear all the explanations from everybody in the comments section. Leave it for yourself, none of them are valid. Uh, I do love fantasy baseball, I'm getting ready for our draft, I'm super pumped. Uh, Look, I think it's content, 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 my friend. So first of all, the first thing you should do is so many, so many people want to be in the fantasy baseball, fantasy football, fantasy sports industry. So the first thing is, the exposure of this show's question alone puts you in the game. I bet you that if, Matthew, you go into my YouTube channel right now, you will see 11 people that will volunteer to be an intern to work on this project because they want to put themselves on the map and you've got brand equity. Like I kind of, you know what's weird? My first inclining to answer this is like, let me write a guest weekly column about like my sleeper picks each week because I want exposure in that world and you're the platform for it and I'm busy and I'm rich and I really still would do it because I don't need to get paid, I want the exposure, right? And by the way, I said I was rich and I want everybody to understand that because if you're poor or not as many dollars, it should make you want to do it even more. That's the brain twist that everybody doesn't see. Anyway, you need to put it out in the world, Matthew, that I need five to, you need to take a day of your time and vet 50 to 100 people and see if they can bring you value, create a team that you give exposure to, and then you need to put out content. Basically, you need to reread, jab, 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 right hook, and you need to put out fantasy sports content native. Look what's happened to this world with my content on Medium and LinkedIn. Like, I mean, you need to put out, where's your weekly video that you put out on Facebook of your sleeper pick that then gets amplified? You need to put out content. The answer to your question is content, 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 especially in fantasy. Content is a gateway drug to subscription. You need to figure out how to afford or use your leverage to bring value to youngsters, youngsters normally, but maybe oldsters. You know how many retired chicks and dudes would do this as well because it's fun? You need to find the right person that matches up to this opportunity that wants your brand equity in exchange for their work because they love doing the work because they want to talk about how much of a sleeper James Paxton is going to be this year in baseball. Question of the day. I am preparing for my fantasy baseball league so I need your fantasy baseball sleeper. If you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, give me your technology app sleeper. Don't use Meerkat. Have a wonderful day. I love you, I love the show. Oh, and I'm gonna right hook a little bit here. I need podcast reviews and subscriptions. DRock, do it up. You keep asking questions. I'll keep answering them.
of course, she's like, mom, bedtime was nine, now can I make a 10? Gary, you, you told, I mean, cause I'm, I'm going. Let's go, let's move, Matt, give me a look, what?